and the host of USA Network's Monday Night Raw, Lillian Garcia. Hey, who hey. looks phenomenal. You Thank look beautiful. You. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let's get a little closer to the mic if you can. Right. Got it. Thank you. She's, a, and she's an old radio pro. Uh, yeah, there you go. You said you were in radio? Yeah, I was. When I was in South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was in college, and it was like the craziest thing that happened. Hurricane Hugo came up, which was a huge hurricane that hit. Right. Mainly like the coast, Charleston, and all that. And I was uh, part of bands at the time, or a band. Yeah. And I had just gotten hired at Thursday, and the hurricane came Friday. So Monday, when we showed up at work, I said, look, I can put a benefit jam together if you guys want. Right. I got 14 bands together and got some, uh, you know, to raise money and everything for it. And then I had to get on radio for three days to advertise it because I had put the whole thing together. So sure. they're like, please get on radio and help us advertise it. I did, and that was from Wednesday to Friday. But that following Monday, they put me in there like, we like you to do the morning nice. show with Chuck Finley. I'm like, Funny. what? Sweet. You went yeah. from so you went from Spain to South Carolina. I went from Spain. Not much of a yeah. difference there. No, not at all. Spain and South all. Carolina. The There's a lot of culture in Spain and a lot of culture in well, maybe not. Maybe yeah. Not. <laughs> how'd you get involved with wrestling? How'd you how'd yeah, you get started was, there? It was kind of crazy, but I after I lived uh, I left South Carolina after I graduated from. USC, the real USC, as Ooh, we all know. That's a shot. Shots fired. <laughs> you live in California now. You got to be careful. I do. I know. I know. But you know what? Their Game Trojans guns, can't. Huh? The Trojans can't handle our cocks. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's bumper stickers that say that. People. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, I moved to New York, and I had an agent. I was doing. I was singing, but I was also hosting. I was doing commercials. Uh, I was doing voiceover work, and my agent said there is an audition for WWF, you know, at the right. time. And I'm like, the World Wildlife Fund? <laughs> <laughs> no, World Wildlife Federation? Like, okay, that's even more weird. Like, yeah. what in the world could I be doing? Like, I watched as a kid with my dad. I was right. totally such a fan. I'll never forget. What was forget your favorite? Andre the Giant and Ric Flair. Me too. I'm serious. I got to see him. I mean, I actually... My dad got yeah. me tickets. We went to the Township Auditorium in Columbia, South Carolina. I got to see Ric Flair and Andre the Giant, and it was just amazing. I loved wrestling when I was a kid, and I used yeah. to watch Andre the Giant. And I remember, you know, they would be they would wrestle in Madison Square Garden once a month, right? You know, in the late seventies and the early eighties. And then I would always say the old the first fight match of the night was always. The unpredictable Johnny Rods against Special Delivery Jones. Do you remember those guys? They were like, no. they were like, I guess they call them jobbers now. Yeah. Okay. That's what yeah. they call them. <laughs> and, anyway. So yeah, that's basically yeah. what they were. But anyway, when Andre became a bad guy, I, I was very angry at wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> that that bothered me so much. Yeah, I got to tell you, I'll never forget when I was actually watching, and then my dad told me, and by the way, this is scripted. I'm like, what? I was so upset. Oh, man. I was literally crying. I, I will never forget that. I was crying going, no, don't tell me that. But now I can totally appreciate it. Like, right. even though I, I'm actually glad that they came out and said that. It's just, it's just, when people say, it's so weird to me when people go, well, oh, how can you watch that? It's fake. I'm like, well, do you ever go to a movie? Like, hello, right. that's written too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you I, watch it as entertainment, not as a sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but let me tell you something. They're really athletic. Sure, absolutely. You can appreciate the athleticism of this. You can watch it as a sport because yeah. what they go through, um, what they put their bodies through is incredible. All right, so you get the gig as, yes. as being... A host. So I go in an audition. Yes, I get the gig. And you get the gig, and this is what year? Two thousand. This is uh, nineteen ninety nine, August of nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. You get the gig with WWF at the time, right? Yeah, right. And uh, what are you thinking? Well, I didn't know because I I didn't even know what it was for. Like they yeah. they told me to show up at Iowa State University, which I did. Okay. And I wasn't. I was given a tour by Michael Cole backstage, all around, and everything. I'm like, oh, this is great. Now, what the heck am I doing here? You had no clue. I, no, no clue. Until three thirty that afternoon. Then they're like, we'd like you to ring announce live on Raw. <laughs> like, okay, how do I do that? <laughs> all right. Were so you scared to death. Like, I, oh my well, gosh. I, I sat down. Tony Chimel sat down with me about four thirty. And I was writing cue cards like crazy. And at 5.30, I went to go get dressed. At 6.30, they came, grabbed me, uh, because we were actually going live. Now, this is Central Time, so we're going live at 8. I'm at uh, 6.30 at ringside watching him do the preliminary matches. And I'm rewriting all my notes because they're all chicken scratch. <laughs> so that's when 20 minutes before I'm supposed to go live, 
that's when Mark Gaten looked at me, the guy who rings the bell, and he looked at me and he goes, you know you can't use cue cards, right? I'm like, what? He goes, no, 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 really? And I said, no, please don't, don't mess with me right now. Don't kid around, like I can't even deal. And he goes, no, you have to have everything memorized. <laughs> like, you have no idea. That was definitely a moment that my everything, my heart just went, my stomach, everything. I, I literally felt like getting up and running away because I was so scared because I didn't know how I was going to pull it off. Luckily, my mom gave me photographic memory. Wow, so I you. look at something, I can remember it. Now, it sounded horrible. I had to learn on the job. I messed up. I, there was no training camp for me or anything. I just... What a bad job out of them. Just yeah, really. Just throw you in there. No, but you know what? They actually wanted just to see, sink or swim. Can that's she right. do it? And I think it's badass. I mean, that's yeah, kind of yeah. no, like... It's, a, it's, it's an know? amazing story. And so they were happy. They're like, okay, you're... Yeah, so you're by in. the next week they saw... Because I went home and just memorized everything. And so by the next week they saw such improvement, they offered me the job. And I told them... Because it was originally two to three month trial basis. So when I... After the second show, they offered me a year's contract. And I said, well, I'd like to continue to try it out for two to three months. Just to right. see if I could even handle the... The travel and I was it's a lot yeah sure but uh I was hooked I was hooked yeah we're and talking here I am 16 years later there you go unbelievable we're talking yeah. with Lillian Garcia from the WWE you uh you talked we were talking a little bit about the travel off the air and what's it like is it, is it a big fraternity or like are you buddies with all the wrestlers I mean how, how does that all work I mean all right I, I want to like are all the guys hitting on you constantly no. does that happen all the time <laughs> No, you know, there's such respect in this company to right. work together. We really are, like, great friends. <clears throat> Excuse me, great friends. And um, I've gotten to know a lot of them. Of course, some of them you know more than others, you know. Um, but it's just great. Every time we come, it's, it's one of those things that we're with each other so much that literally we could be away for five days, but when we see each other, it's like, oh, I just saw you yesterday right, kind right. of deal, you know? So we're all very, very close. Who's the, which wrestlers turn it off the least? when they're, You know, like, I'm sure some of the guys, they, they, you know, they're, they're playing their role or whatever right. it is, and then they go to the locker room and it's off. But there's, there's got to be some guys who are like, they're wrestler all the time. Are there guys who are a little scarier, like, in real life? You know, you would think that, but not really. Really? It's unbelievable how quiet things some I'm like most of them can be really? backstage and all of that and then, then when they go out and they're just like you know right, and right, they right. perform and and just have that excitement and energy and then backstage just be so chill that's the thing that kind of surprised me the most I think no, there's no guys that are like lunatics no really not one no, not one that is, is really coming to mind that is yeah. an absolute lunatic but like guys that hate each other in real life this no. guy no, no, no way. Everybody it's gets really... along. What, what is this? La -la well, let me tell you something. They they don't show it. Right. It's, a, it's it's really they keep it a so secret. It's, yeah, it's true. It's, yeah. Wow. All right, good. It's really cool. So being the host in, yes. in the uh, the ring, um, how much do you know what's going to happen beforehand? I I actually ask them not to tell me. Really? Yeah. Oh, I I want to know. I want to watch it as a fan. Okay. I really do. So only a few times will I know something ahead because there's a specific, like, exact announcement that they want me to make, you know, that I'll have to know. But most of the time I'm like, please don't even, you know, just don't even. So when you hear me, it's like, oh, here's yeah. your winner. Like, that's, you know. That's me. real. Yeah, yeah, it's real. It's cool. Do they ever break script? I mean, does the guy who's supposed to lose ever win and it's a, I, it ever happen? If that happens, I would you know. You wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. But do you think it ever happens or probably not? I don't think so. No, they always thought they would do it I think it's again. a pretty tight shift. Because I think that when we found out that, it, you know, with Bret Hart situation or something, I feel like that's when it was like the big controversy. Oh, right. he wasn't supposed to, you know, <laughs> not lose. Right, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Now, you are uh, yeah, uh, also a singer, of course. Yes. I was reading that uh, you, you sing the national anthem numerous times. Yes. And you used to sing it for every Raw, right? For every single Raw. But then when we went to three hours long, now there's no time to do it because we start the show a half hour before we Sounds usually good. start the show like a, an hour before, hour and a half before. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get the matches in for superstars and all. But now, because we, we start 30 minutes before Raw goes live, there's only 30 minutes to get the two matches in to get the announcers down there to welcome the crowd to to do the live cut in to USA Network to, like there's so much to get done in that sure. 30 minute time there's just no time for the anthem. It's the biggest event you sang the national anthem at? The biggest would be I guess Russell well between WrestleMania and the Jets like I've done the Jets New York Jets ten times wow. now yeah 
It's pretty cool. That's really cool. Yeah, and I got to even do a seven-minute halftime show when I released my uh, my album, uh, My Time. I they called me. They're like, we want you to do a seven-minute halftime show with our cheerleaders. Can you do it? I'm like. Absolutely. Like, I'm all in. I'm all in. So I did the anthem <laughs> and then the seven minute show yeah, was great. Good. What is it, when you're prepping to uh, to sing, you know, you're, yeah. you're going on stage this weekend and, uh, and tonight. Tonight. Yeah. When you, is there something you have to do? Do you have a routine you follow? Yeah. Well, definitely throat coat tea. Right. Uh, definitely honey. No lemon. That's a, I don't know where that came from, but lemon, you don't want that around your throat. Okay. Um, so honey and throat coat tea break, and then I vocalize. Basically. What does that mean? Vocalize is it, it's doing the scales and oh, stuff okay, because yeah. you got to warm up your voice just like if somebody was a, a guy was about to do a match, they warm up their body, you know, warming it up and stretching and all that. That's exactly what I'll be doing. And we should probably be doing things like that too. And I've been doing radio yeah. for like 16 years. I don't do any of that. I'm probably losing my voice. Tell him how bad it is. Every day he starts the show and I he scream. screams. <laughs> oh, God, I'm probably horrible. ruining my throat. But yeah. hey, listen, that, that's it. That's your thing. This is it. This is it. Oh my gosh. He does that every single day. Wow. That just hurt me. That just hurt me. That can't be good. You gotta go for what works for you. Right? <laughs> you gotta, hey, you got your thing. Every wrestler's got their move, right? Yeah. That's, that's my move. That's I'm your move. Wrestler, that's your move? That's my move. That's my scream. Well, you can still do it. It's just yeah. it, you would not hurt yourself if you warmed if up did, a little bit. I know. Bit I learned all that stuff in college, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't you get lazy. <laughs> you, get, yeah, you get lazy over the years, you know? Um, talk about what's going on this weekend. Yes. I know it's a great event uh, for the Akron Children's Hospital. There's a lot of cool people in town. A lot. Tell us, yeah, so tell the folks why you're here and, okay. and what's going on. Yeah, so every year, uh, actually it's been like 13 years now uh, for the Lopen. This is my fourth year that I've been involved. And it all kicks off tonight. It's the Hard Rock Show first at 7.30 is Kip Winger is gonna be performing, doing an acoustic show, and then right after that gets out, he's gonna be at the Velvet Room. And tickets are still available, $25, Ticketmaster, or also the Rock Center. And then right after that, you can go to the Hard Rock Cafe, which I'm gonna be performing around nine o'clock. And I've got my acoustic show that I'll be doing. As a matter of fact, my guitar player and my violinist are in the air right now. They're supposed to arrive last this morning and yeah. take a red eye. Their flight got canceled, so we had the first you know, like OMG oh, moment. Gosh. You always <laughs> work together. with the same people? Yeah, I actually had like the full band that I did in Vegas. I did a residency there and all. But then for something like this, I've just made it shorter. I've got a new guitar player. My violinist has been with me from the from the get-go. Right. He's amazing. So, um, yeah, PJ and Vito. So they're going to be there tonight. They land at 5 o'clock today. Oh, wow. Fingers crossed. Okay. I know. Going straight there. So we've got that tonight, and my my portion of it is complimentary. So, um, but everything is to benefit the Akron Children's Hospital. And then tomorrow we have a golf outing, celebrity golf outing. And then tomorrow night is another concert. Now all of that has been like one of those private things for everybody who's come in. Uh, and then Saturday we have another concert at seven o'clock, and that is uh, Brother Trouble, which they're amazing band. Uh, they're, they're, the group, rock, they're, the, they're a country they're group, so right? They're country group. They're so good. Yeah, okay. they're country guys. They're so awesome. Starship, and then we have Lou Graham, which is the voice of Foreigner. So all oh, three wow. of those. And Starship, the band from the 80s? Yeah. They're still around? Yeah. I love them. <laughs> I didn't know they were still around. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Go, yeah, wow. Oh, so, and then you can get tickets for that, and what's awesome is if you do the VIP package, Tone Loke will be performing. Tone Loke? Yeah. Oh Lucky my Cold. God, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, Where's so all of that in? starts at twenty bucks. That's I mean, pretty cheap. That's really cheap. Yeah, it's and it goes to a good cause. All of it. One hundred percent of the proceeds are going to the Akron Children's Hospital. So, and that's like I said, you can get your tickets through Ticketmaster or right. the Roxino box office. Now, could you could you sing for us right now, or can you not do that? Are you not able? I, I don't want to put any pressure on you. If you can't do it, it's all right. I don't want. I know you got to sing tonight. Yeah. Um, is that something you could do or no? Of course. I'm just trying to think what I, I think, would well, do. Yeah, give us something something a cappella. Yeah, well, she sings yeah. acoustic, so... I sing uh, acoustic, yeah. We yeah. Don't have, I, I don't know. I mean, is it something you want to do? If you don't want to, sure, it's okay. Sure, sure. Oh, she wants uh, to sing. Look at that. She, um, she's she's I, thinking I, about the, good, you the know best what? song. So fun. I, I used to always be, like, so super shy oh, about yeah. stuff like that. It's so much easier for me to sing in an arena of, like, 80,000 people than for, like, three people right sure. now. Sure. But... 
I, a long time ago, I learned, they started drilling on me. You yeah. gotta take those opportunities. You gotta do it. So, <laughs> so what song, what song can you sing for us? So, um, let's see. Um, uh, la, 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 la. I mean, I don't know whether you guys want to hear something in English or Spanish. I'd like Spanish. Yeah. I'd like to hear something Can you hear like 30 okay. seconds of okay. uh, English, 30 right. seconds yeah. of Spanish? So I'll do, what's that now? 30 seconds of each, or a minute of each. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Well, first I'll do... Just uh, give us a tease. Spanish is very sexy. It's yeah. much sexier than English. You're such a pervert. <laughs> I'm not a pervert. I want to hear I have a sexy song. Or it's a little pervert. Quiero Vivir is uh, the album that I had in Spanish, actually. Okay. And uh, so this is actually the song called Quiero Vivir, which means I want to live. Okay. So this is the chorus. Ahora grito y yo siento toda esta pasión en mí. Estoy lista, preparada para el cambio en sí. No me asusto ya de nada. Nunca viraré atrás. Adiós a mi pesar. Quiero vivir. All right, can you do anyway. can you do a little English here? A little English. Too much to ask? No. Are we pushing it? I'm just trying to figure out what to do here. All right. What? Uh, I don't know why that just automatically came to mind. That's very but, nice. Um, That's, wow, you got a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what's the, uh, another one I'm doing tonight is Uprising, which okay. I absolutely love. Uh, uh, now I'm trying to think what, how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> will not force us. They will stop degrading us. They will not control us. We will be victorious. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Great. I mean, we, you know, just off the top of your head. Unbelievable. Wow, you have a beautiful voice. Thank and you. Everybody should go see her tonight. Yes. Tomorrow night. Well, tonight is at the Hard Rock. Right, right. right. That's tomorrow my performance. Tomorrow night's your little private deal, right? Tomorrow is, yeah, it's the private yeah. deal. And then Saturday's that whole, yeah. uh, you know, Starship and Brother right, Trouble. Yeah. And it all is that. really yeah. cool. Yeah, um, it's going to be a fun weekend. For more information, they, for tickets, they can go to Ticketmaster. Yes. Right. And, and for the reason? whole schedule, you yeah. you can just go to lopenrocks.com. L O P E N. L O P E N rocks.com. Rocks. Awesome. Yeah. And what's great is that so far we've raised close to a million dollars wow. for these kids. And like I said, a hundred percent of the proceeds go. So again, it's all going to the awesome. Akron Children's Hospital. Yes. So it's a great cause. We really appreciate you stopping oh, by. Oh, thank you for studio. having me. It was beautiful listening thank to you, you. sing. She does a great job, and everybody knows you from WWE. You're a great singer. Multi-talented lady right now. Yeah. here. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Garcia. Thank you again for joining us. Everybody go see her all weekend long. We'll uh, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll get back to the conversation we were having uh, about the LeBron James article from Mark Stein. That's straight ahead after the 2020 uh, with Dave Shalero in just a moment.